now let's make a cylinder, which is extremely different. Start off with the same four pounds of clay. Good. Okay, good. Got four pounds of clay. Now, you see me with my hands all over this thing. But what you have to understand is that where I'm applying pressure is just here, here, and there, here, like this. We're gonna, I'm gonna illustrate this power of the fingertips one more time. You can see how I'm, it takes more repetitions of the technique to take it down than to take it up because you're, you're working on top of the clay and you're, 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 you're running out of lubricant much quicker as you push it down. So you come down like this. All right, if it looks like this, although it's not perfect, you could probably proceed. If it looks like this, that means you have to bring it up again. So let's look at that technique where I'm just using the fingertips on my dominant hand and placing them on the side of the piece and just pushing in. See how effective that is. When you combine it with the press, the, with the push on the heel and the heel, then you actually have something. So let's do that. So remember, you wet your hands, you wet the piece, you wet your hands, you apply slip. You want this thing to be as slippery as possible. But now we're going to go heel of the right hand, heel of the left hand, and fingertips of the right hand really pulling. And don't never worry about this volcano thing at the top. It will it will take care of itself. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be a vase. Might be a pitcher, we'll see what happens. So this is close enough for opening. We're gonna take the opening like this. Okay. 
All right, so we've opened this piece all the way to the bottom, but what you can't see is that on the inside, I have flattened the bottom out, and the inside wall is like it's vertical. I can show you that right now. So you saw what the inside of the bowl looked like. Okay, when you when you get ready to throw a cylinder. This is what the inside looks like. Basically have, you've already established a flat bottom, a corner, and a vertical wall. You have to do that from the very beginning. What you're gonna do, what I'm going to do now when I'm gonna throw another piece, what I'm gonna do now is when I throw this wall up, when I lift this wall up, I'm gonna push the wall out I'm going to get underneath that bulge and I'm going to lift it up. I'll just get over here and we'll try that one more time. So we're going to we're going to get to this point one more time with another piece of clay. You open it just like you were going to open a bowl. It's opening like a cone. But this is where it changes. Rather than continue to go like this and lift up and lift and like this, what I'm doing is I'm coming in like this and I'm going sideways. And I'm digging into that corner. So I'm going in and going across and I'm digging in that corner. And then I'm shifting my inside hand and my outside hand does a lot of work here. What my outside hand is doing is taking clay and pushing it up. I'm right-handed, so this clay is being pushed to my left shoulder. When you're throwing a bowl, the whole time that you're throwing, you're pulling towards the shoulder that you're working on, from, from which you're working. So you're always coming down and lifting like this, coming down and lifting like this. When you're throwing a cylinder, you're coming across on the inside, making a flat bottom, establishing the corner, and then lifting and coming across to your opposite shoulder. And just as in all throwing, you want your piece to be narrower than the final form at all times. You never want to be in a position where you have to bring the wall back in again. So when I'm throwing a tall cylinder, I always try 
and keep that opening at the top as narrow as I can make it and still be able to get my hand back in there. That gives me a lot of choices as to what the form is going to actually look like. So this is how you raise a wall. I'm going to get in there with my inside hand. I'm going to push the wall out and you'll see a bulge form here. I'm going to come in under that bulge and I'm going to take that clay and stretch it up and lift the wall and push it back in again. So we get down to the bottom here. There's that bulge. See that bulge? Now I, I've got a sponge here. I'm not throwing with a sponge. What I'm doing is I've got my sponge sitting right here. I squeeze it. A little bit of water comes out as it comes up. So the bulge is out. My fingers are underneath it. So the role of my inside hand is to constantly push clay out a little bit so that my outside hand can bring that clay and raise the form up. My fingers tell me that I can get about two more pulls out of this before I start to lose structural integrity of the wall. Again, I'm pushing out just a little bit. I've got In a tall piece like this, you, you lose your angles. Take a chance and do one more pull. See that bulge, it's still the same technique. Grab that clay. Now at some point, you get to the point of diminishing returns. And that's where I am right now. So this pull here, I doubt that I'm getting much more in the way of height out of it. But, mm -hmm. now let's see what we have. It looks huge, it looks enormous, it looks fabulous, but is it really that big? I don't know. Is it over 12 inches? No, it's not even 12 inches, it's not even 10 inches. No, it's just 10 and a quarter inches, but that's fine. Remember, form is the most important thing. If you keep pulling clay to the point where you lose control of the form, there's really no point in what you're doing. So there's your cylinder. At this point, we'll try and make a, a pitcher shape. See how we do.
<laughs> now, at this point, an experienced potter would have a heat gun or a propane torch. And they would use that to stabilize parts of the wall while they worked on other parts of the wall. So far, I'm in good shape here. I haven't lost structural integrity. But there's nothing wrong with applying a little bit of extra heat to a particular area if you need, if it starts to fail. And uh, if you study ceramics and you think that that's a new thing and that uh, using a torch or a heat gun is somehow, remember, There's no cheating in art. There is a guy, very famous potter, dead now. He was in the, uh, he's in the uh, Metropolitan Museum and he's in the, all the books. His name is George Orr, the mad potter of Biloxi. And he made all kinds of fantastical shapes that were made with the use of the earliest form of propane of a uh, kerosene pro, uh, blowtorch. So that's your four pound uh, vase shape in the um, uh, pitcher, pitcher shape. So when you throw a bowl, just because look at the size, look at the look at the variation in size here. The bowl is nice and heavy and it has a nice curve and everything. And the pitcher, which is also four pounds, has been stretched out into this really thin wall. Um, and um, once this wall stiffens up a little bit, I'll probably put a little, I'll probably put a little spout. All right. <laughs> All right, so it's the same thing. Oh. 
All right, so. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. All right, so it's centered or close enough. So this is the third basic form that I teach, and it's the plate. If this were going to be a bowl or a cylinder, I would open it and start to make my form. But in this case, I have to, in order to make a plate, the base of the form has to be much, much wider. So, yeah. this clay's got a little bit of, it's recycled, it's got a little bit of a problem. So we're gonna go with something else now. <coughs> Okay. The plate. Remember, you do the cone, you bring it up, wet your hands, wet the piece, wet your hands, bring it down. Mm-hmm. All right, so at this point, if this were going to be a cylinder or a bowl, I would open it all the way to the bottom, and I would pull, I would open it in such a way to either become a cylinder or a bowl. But this is going to become a plate, and the thing about a plate is that the plate has to have a wide base. Now, you can get on top of this and try and push it down. There are potters that do that. And I could do that too. I wouldn't, I don't think it's particularly good for your back or your shoulders. So I suggest you do this. Open it up just a little bit. Just like that. Just a little dimple. Move that dimple off about halfway. And then using the base of your thumbs on both sides, push down. and widen the form. And then just repeat, open it. And each time you open it, you're gonna bring it over just a little bit further. Now this opening thing becomes more complicated as you progress because it's a bigger part of the step. So now 
when I bring this open, I have this, I push this to the side. 